Hello everyone. One day, a little girl while out with her grandmother in her garden caught a frog. Before bringing the frog inside her home, she kissed the frog and wished it to turn into a handsome prince. The next day, she took the frog to her school. Her friends asked, "Hey, you have your frog for your pet?" "It's not a frog," she replied. "It is a prince." Her friends repeatedly shouted, "No, it's a frog." And she repeatedly said, "No, it is a prince." Meanwhile, the frog was croaking non-stop. Friends, Despite her insistence her friends could not accept that her frog was a prince a frog is a frog they could not be fooled the same is true for christians how can others know we are christians what do we have to do to prove we are christians if you say you are a christian does everyone believe that you are a christian who and what is and isn't a christian Some say that being born into a Christian family or growing up in a Christian community makes a person a Christian. Others say that being christened or baptized by a priest or minister makes a person a Christian. Some assume that someone having a religious or biblical or saint's name is a Christian. Some others argue that they are Christ's followers but not Christians. They do not want to use the word Christian because they do not like the religion of Christianity. And others say that many profess to be followers of Christ but their lives and their priorities show otherwise. So, some do not want to believe and accept someone as a Christian despite the person having a Christian name and attending all religious services and rituals. So, what truly makes someone a Christian? How does the Bible, God inspired word, describe a Christian? In the Gospel of Mark, a Christian is described as someone who loves God the Father and Jesus Christ with all his heart, mind and strength. According to Matthew and Luke, a Christian is one who is committed to live by every word of God, not by the bread alone. John puts it slightly differently. He says that a christian is one who holds to the teaching of jesus james in his epistle which we read in today's second reading emphasizes that faith if it does not have works is dead that is to say we cannot call ourselves christians if we do not put our faith into action friends This is the third Sunday we read and reflect upon St James' letter to the early Christians. Let me recap on what James has told us so far. The first Sunday he urged us to gratefully recognize every good thing, especially the word of truth or the gospel of Jesus as a gift from God. Humbly welcome it and do not be just hearers of the word but also doers of the word. Then he explained that purity and efficacy of a religion and faith can be well manifested through our concern and care for the poor, particularly the orphans, widows and less fortunate. Last Sunday, James admonished us to avoid favoritism or partiality to anyone based on his or her social or economic status or the lack of such status. He also pointed out that when we show partiality or treat someone differently we allow evil thoughts to compromise our judgment and discriminate against the poor and the lowly people who are loved by God the most instead he encouraged unity and respect for one another within a community and true faith which expresses itself in acts of love and compassion In today's text he goes one step further by highlighting the differences between dead or useless faith and living or saving faith. James asks us a series of questions for us to ponder over. He asks, "What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him?" If your brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day and one of you says to him or her 
Go in peace, keep warm and eat well. But do not give the person the necessities of the body. What good is it? Friends, what James means is that if a person in need of food or clothes shows up at a believer's doorstep, rather than providing some actual assistance for the need, if the believer sends the person away with good tidings and a promise of prayer, such a believer's faith is useless. In other words, true faith in God ought to manifest itself in obedience to God's commandments, and true transformation of life ought to be demonstrated with the good works we do. How we live reveals what we believe and whether the faith we confess to is a living faith or true faith. Therefore, true faith in God ultimately has to do with being good and be useful for something. You might want to ask some questions here. Why do we have to do good works? We ought to do good works because we have been saved and given eternal life by Jesus. Because God has showed us such wonderful, unfathomable love and mercy through His Son, Jesus Christ, we ought to show His love to others. Our good works are a reflection of our heartfelt love, gratitude and thankfulness to God. 2. To whom can we do good works? We must do good works to all people without partiality or prejudice, and even do good to those who hate us, as Jesus says, and whether or not the other person changes. 3. How much and how long do I have to do good works? We ought to do good works till the end, or until we drop dead. That is to say, we should not become weary in helping others. Friends, let us therefore try and examine our faith today. Test yourself whether you have a living faith or a dead faith. Do not assume that you have real or true faith just because you are a baptized Christian. Let us beware of self-deceit. Self-deceit or self-deception can destroy your happiness and deprive you of blessings. Together with your faith, nurture the habit of doing good works. Besides the love offering you make every week and during natural disasters, through which you bring God's compassion and love to people in need, regularly help the poor and homeless in small ways. Let more and more goodness and kindness spring from your faith. Spread the gospel of Jesus through your thoughts, words and deeds. I am sure God will give you hope and fill you with much joy and peace while you trust in Him and carry out good works in His name. As you make efforts to be a true disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the words of Blessed Mother Teresa reverberate in your mind and heart. A sacrifice to be real must cost, must hurt and must empty ourselves. The fruit of silence is prayer, the fruit of prayer is faith, the fruit of faith is love, the fruit of love is service, and the fruit of service is peace. Amen. God bless you.